Another huge Habs trade report is insider David Pagnata points out that the Habs are making calls and taking calls on four players this deadline, including a name that you might be surprised to hear is in the conversations. We have to dive into that. Plus, Pierre Lebrun released an article on The Athletic outlining the impact of the Chris Tanev trade on the market, and he said that the offer the Montreal Canadiens could get for David Savard is, uh, is quite high. That plus a recap of the Habs versus the Panthers, all in this episode of Habs Digest. First things first, Jesse, we got to talk about the game. Look, you could not possibly put together a better tanking game than this. Oh my gosh, there were so many positives, and the Habs honestly should have came out of this one with a win. They had the opportunities, and if it wasn't for Matthew Kachuk falling to the ice like a newborn deer 15 times throughout this game leading to power plays, punching people in the face with no repercussions, Habs would have had this. Not going to blame it on the refs, but hey, this is, this is about the best outcome. Nick Suzuki, a goal, two assists. Slavkovsky scores with 0.7 seconds left in the second to tie it. Newhook gets a power play goal. Savarin and Jack Eye playing phenomenal games. Monty deserved that win. Um, but let's start with Suzuki, Jesse. He's up to 59 points in 60 games now. He has 11 goals in his last 11 games. I don't even know what to say anymore. This dude is the hottest scorer in the NHL right now, not named Austin Matthews just behind him right now and it's amazing considering what Austin Matthews is doing you know this year and everything for his goal scoring but no absolutely amazing you know on that power play what I'm really liking is that chemistry that we're starting to see develop from Caulfield, Suzuki and Newhook that tic-tac-toe well pretty much everybody on the PP you know Slav Matheson included there as well but like we saw that a couple times we're on their PP nothing static they're moving around. They're getting amazing opportunities. And for me, Suzuki, seeing them play so well, this is just taking what the ceiling of this team can be so much. Because he's the captain, right? On him kind of coming into his potential and really living up for that really just raises what this team is capable of, speeds up that rebuild tremendously, right? Because he's looking now not just like that playmaker, but that goal scorer, you know, which is so amazing considering what he offer also offers on the defensive side of the puck. For me, now those are getting to be elite level qualities in the NHL. Yeah, and as Paul Maurice said before this game, when I asked about Nick Suzuki, he said, well, he has a whole lot of bark of it, and man, you can see it. Suzuki is on the verge of being a 30-goal point-per-game player on one of the worst teams in the NHL. If that's with elite defense, mind you. that If that's not a number one center, I don't know what is. Fantastic stuff. We could talk about him for ages. Shout out to Newhook as well for getting a great power play goal off these amazing passing plays. But we got to talk a bit about Slavkovsky. After not having the best series of games coming into this one, of course, against the Coyotes, he was benched for a bit we saw Joshua Waugh step up on that first line while Slav was benched for taking some penalties he learned his lesson he's being a bit more physical and he scored an incredibly clutch goal tonight with 0.7 seconds on the clock there was three seconds when the puck dropped in the offensive zone Slav manages to get it and fire at home Jesse he has looked so comfortable and so aggressive recently he looks like he makes some mistakes in games he looks motivated to not make those mistakes again and he just proves himself every single second I am so so happy with what I'm seeing from Slav. and you got to feel for him that one kind of giveaway there that led to the tying goal but it's like i was watching from this angle like it was open but the nhl is just so quick that it got closed right but what's so cool about this guy is that not only does he have so much skill but then also so much physicality knocking guys over not taking anything on the ice you know like it's very rare where you see that type of combination where somebody has that type of skill and then can also be so physically imposing which for me is again such a great combination for winning hockey in the future for me right now Slav, he he's my favorite he has my most favorite shot on the entire team like i know suzuki i know caulfield's a gunslinger we saw that in the shootout but i think what Slav's shot can become and we saw it on the power play starting to shoot more that quick relief at the end of the second like this guy's shot is amazing and what's so funny is like the more he scores like tonight the more confident he gets, the more confident he gets. But you get where I'm going with this. We're talking about Slapzilla, but it's just crazy how you start to see this kind of building together, right? That shot, I feel like when it comes together, it, it's going to be feared in the NHL. For sure. Now, if I wasn't traveling for work and I and this wasn't my backup computer, I would play that Slapzilla animation right now, but you're very right. In fact, I think he needs to shoot more. There was a couple times this game where he made the extra pass when he could have just fired it, but regardless... Great tank game. Habs go down in the standings and they play one of their best games of the season against one of the top teams in the NHL. We take it and we live with it. Um, but next thing, Jesse, we got to talk a bit about David. So actually, wait, no, we'll do this. Uh, David Savard and the Chris Tanev trade 
changes quite a lot when you look at the landscape of the NHL defensemen. So Pierre Lebrun, of course, naturally wrote an article today detailing the impact of the Chris Tanev trade on the market. And here's what he had to say, specifically talking about the Canadians and David Savard. He said that if you're looking for the next closest thing to Tanev, well, a right shot, rugged blue liner with experience come playoff time, it's David Savard. As I've said before, the Habs aren't committed to trading him, just to be clear, but that doesn't mean they won't. Based on conversations I've had with other front office sources in the league, the Canadians will need a certain bar to be met in trade offers to move him. And well, what is that bar? Well, he says there's clearly a conversation happening within the Habs front office, both in terms of him staying put and what it would take to move him. It's a healthy debate. I think it would take a first round pick a young player with value equivalent to a first-round pick, or multiple picks with combined value equivalent to a first, and that doesn't surprise me, Jesse. Seeing what Chris Tanev went for, a lot of people saying it was a steal <laughs> on behalf of the Dallas Stars who gave up, a, I believe it was a second and a third, and a former second-round pick solid prospect. It wouldn't shock me if teams were offering that kind of stuff for David Savard, maybe a prospect that's a first-round quality guy. I know at this point, I don't think the Habs should maybe move on from him. I think they want to keep him. But if the offer is like that, you get a first or even more for Savard. I mean, you got to take it, right? Well, we're seeing that value tonight of why he would be commanding such an offer there. It's plus two, three plus block shots, just playing with a level of heart that you really don't see in the NHL. And when it comes down to the playoffs, winning GMs, no, nine out of 10, you need a player like David Savard on your team, right? It just really comes down to that. And, that's why he's really so valuable. But I like that we're really dealing in a position of strength where we're more than happy to keep him. But if you're going to blow away our socks, we're not opposed to reason, right? But it's just such a nice situation, right, where we really realize what he has. Of course, there's always a part of me in my mind playing devil's advocate, right, where it's like you do always want to trade a player before they go over the hill and everything else like that. And you see sometimes the Habs have been guilty of getting caught with that in, in the past, right? That's always... So hard to determine. You don't want to disrespect a player that's obviously bringing so much to your team as well, right? But it's always trying to be mindful of these things ahead of time. That being said, I think David Savard provides so much to this team. And I think that that value is fully understood by Ken Hughes. Yeah, and I'm sure it's fully understood by other teams. But I, I really think the Habs are going to get some serious offers for him. I mean... You're a contender. You want a rugged right-handed defenseman. This is your choice. This is your best choice. Yes, you have to commit to an extra year, which might be might be scary, might make some teams a little wary. But hey, I think David Savard is worth it. Hey, if he doesn't move, I'm cool sticking with him. I'm cool sticking with David Savard, the Quebec boy. Like, I'm all right with it. But let us know down below. Do you want him moved after seeing the return for Chris Tanev? Let us know. Final thing we got to talk about, Jesse, is, uh, yeah, Kent Hughes might be more active than we thought. Now, we knew he'd be, you know, making calls, taking calls, and all kinds of different players, but a recent report from Dave Pagnata outlines that, well, there are some interesting players. Now, some familiar names, some that we've talked a bit about, maybe, the Habs, how the Habs could trade them, but nothing in a concrete report, but take a look at this. As he says, uh, well, no, not that, sorry, this one here. With the March 8th trade deadline just days away, it looks like Canadian's general manager, Kent Hughes, could have something else cooking. I don't have the animation, I'm so sorry. According to Dave Pagnotta, he said, after revealing that a handful of teams have engaged in trade discussions with Montreal for David Savard, Pagnotta reported the Habs are fielding and making calls on two forwards and one goalie, those being Yoel Armia, Tanner Pearson, and Jake Allen. Of course, Savard is still the most valuable deadline asset. The other three could generate a decent return. And Armia was once considered untradeable, but the Habs, after sending him to Laval, called him back up. He has been one of their better defensive forwards, weirdly, but also one of their more skilled offensive forwards who has 10 goals now. He comes with a bit of risk, of course, three and a half million this year and next. But hey, if Montreal could pull off a trade, that'd be amazing. And of course, Pearson's an expiring contract who could fit very well on a contender. Maybe the Habs could retain some. Or if they decide to broker another deal, maybe another team could broker a Pearson deal. And of course, Jake Allen. Um, Jesse, this is interesting. I, I, I'm kind of surprised to hear that Kent is calling and taking calls, especially about Armia. And I figured these guys would be the top guys. But to hear that Hughes is like, yeah, no, I'm trying to move these guys. It, it, it's very... Very, very encouraging that the deal will happen very soon. It's true. And I think Ken is really determining who's part of the long-term future of this team. Obviously, Jake Allen, just with the goaltending situation, the writing's on the wall there. And then with Tanner Pearson as well, I just think we have so many young players coming up. We're for sure this year, super a value of service is to have a vet there. Maybe a little couple injuries, you know, I'm sure he would like a little bit more time on the ice this year. But at the same, you know, I think... He kind of knew it coming in that this might have been a little bit more of a shorter term sort of thing. Kent as well. 
Um, so what kind of makes sense is we're kind of shaping out the future, right? And of course, with Army, if we can make something happen there, I think Kent is interested in doing that to really just speed up, just kind of freeing the books, you know, a little bit more and having a little bit more of a wiggle room financially and everything else like that. So I think if Kent is able to do this and really free up some space, I mean, that's going to lead to a really good summer for him. All right. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot, Jesse, but I'm also going to give my opinion of these three guys. Not just saying trading in general, but by the deadline, which one do you think, if you're going to guarantee one, if you can guarantee one, who do you think is moved? I'm going to I'm gonna give my shot. I think, this is going to be weird, but I think Tanner Pearson is all but a guarantee to be traded by this deadline. Here's my reason. Kent Hughes has already said that Jake Allen, he's okay sticking until the offseason if he doesn't get the deal he wants. Yorlamia still has another year left on his deal, and while I'm sure his value could arguably be at his highest right now with teams... You know, maybe next year, if he declines, if the teams won't be as, as eager to get him. Pearson on an expiring, I think it's it's basically guaranteed that he gets moved. Well, what are your thoughts on, on those three? I like that one. But I'm going off the board with a defenseman. Ooh. I'm going to try to get a 2-1. I'm looking for a Kovacevic or a Harris type thing. Ooh. I feel like teams are trying to feel like they can buy cheap on Harris right now, which they're right. They're probably going to buy cheap and probably get a pretty good defenseman that will flourish within their system that just – has a little bit more space, a little bit more of a demand for, for a defender right now. Um, and obviously, Kovac have a shoe. We got Harris coming up. We got Ryan Bacher as soon as next year. I mean, that's two positions, I think, as of next year. If you're Kent Hughes, you got to be leaving those spots open, right? So it's this trade deadline. I think there has to be some defenseman that's moved on the Montreal Canadiens. Well, Jess, you've been calling a Jonathan Kovacevic trade since, uh, well, much earlier in the <laughs> season. And if it happens, we are, we are coming right back here and we are giving you all the – flowers in the world because we know that uh, you're the one that officially called it but yeah what do you guys think of all the players that might get moved by the deadline who do you think is maybe the closest to a guarantee i say maybe pearson jesse says maybe harris or kovacevic we'd love to hear what your thoughts are down below but that'll do it for this episode of habs digest if you enjoyed leave a like comment subscribe to the channel guys you guys have been subscribing like crazy and we really really appreciate it i'm josh goss my co-host jesse poirier we'll catch you in the next one